Dear students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the system of diagnosis of poisoning, the clinical and post-mortem diagnosis of poisoning and also the various aspects of diagnosis of poisoning. Now students, let us start with the introduction of this module. Diagnosis of poisoning is time and again challenging and has to be finished on the available evidences. In several cases, slight or not at all toxicity occurs and the parents or relatives are relieved. On occasion, the history may not be available at all or may be perhaps unreliable. Various cases of poisoning presents ambiguous symptoms and in some fatal acute poisoning, the symptoms may be delayed for many hours to even days. Some poisons develop misleading symptoms, for example, gastrointestinal type of arsenical poisoning may be mistaken for symptoms of cholera or food poisoning also. Hence, an operational diagnosis has to be made based on the clinical features as well as the laboratory examination. The articles or the containers recovered from the scene of crime or from the possession of the victim may provide assistance in case of suspected poisoning when the diagnosis is not immediately apparent. There are several symptom patterns which are typical for different types of poisoning and can be useful in guiding to the nature of poison, the laboratory test needed and also the treatment required. The examination should also include the exploration for signs of trauma and systemic disease because many organic illnesses enter into the differential diagnosis of poisoning. The symptoms, clinical examinations, and the patterns of poisoning by some commonly used drugs and poisons have been discussed here in this module and which I will tell you about and which are also essential in assessing the patient and may help to identify the agent and severity of the problem also. Post-mortem toxicology is used to determine whether alcohol, drugs or other poisons may have caused or contributed to the death of the person. Now students, let us study about the signs and symptoms of poisoning. In this table, we have on one column the symptoms and on one column we have shown the poisons that are involved in causing those types of symptoms. So first we have vomiting and the poisons involved are irritant poisons like arsenic acids, alkalis, excess of liquor and some metallic salts. Next is diarrhea. The poisons involved are the usually the poisons causing vomiting also cause the diarrhea. For cramps, metallic poisons like arsenic, lead, antimony, mercury etc. Delirium is caused by the poisoning of dhatura, cannabis, alcohol, atropine, hyoscine and LSD etc. Convulsions may be caused due to the poisoning of strychnine, nicotine, cyanides, tricyclic antidepressants, phenothiazines, carbon monoxide, ethylene glycol, opioids, organophosphate, insecticides and salicylates. Paralysis is caused by the poisoning of lithium, amphetamines, lead, arsenic, aconite, snake venom, etc. And coma is caused by the poisoning of barbiturates, carbon monoxide, chloroform, trichloroethanol, opioids and excess of liquors. Next is Clinical Diagnosis of Poisoning Students, in this table, on one column we have the clinical findings and on the second column we have shown the poisons that are involved in the clinical diagnosis of poisoning. First is the 
skin color in the clinical finding. If it is cherry pink, then it means it has the poisoning of carbon monoxide. If the skin color is flushed pink skin, then the poisoning must have been caused due to alcohol, cocaine, cyanide and anti-chlorogenic agents. If it is jaundice, then it has been caused by hepatotoxic agents like paracetamol. And in case of central cyanosis, a sign of hypoxia but methemoglobinemia also causes similar color. Next is the skin changes. Cutaneous bullae. It is caused by the poisoning of barbiturates, glutathimide, sedative overdoses, tricyclic antidepressants and carbon monoxide also. Also caused by the organic conditions like hypoglycemia and in case of sweating, it is due to the myocardial infarction or better known as MI also and pyrexia due to infarctions and poisoning by salicylate, organophosphates or monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Next, the pupils. If the pupils are dilated, it means the pupil dilate in severe hypoxia cases and in hypothermia also. Drugs such as tricyclic antidepressants also cause dilation. Glutathamide and monoamine oxidase inhibitors produce wide dilation of the pupil. Next, if the pupils are constricted, it means the opioids typically cause pinpoint pupils, means the constriction of the pupil. Organophosphate insecticides and trichloroethanol poisoning will also cause very small pupils. In barbitrate poisoning, the pupils may vary in size at times being small and at other times it may dilate also. So it will vary in case of barbitrate poisoning. Next, the changes in body temperature. If it is a case of hypothermia, then the comatose condition or the comatose situation for some time may cause hypothermia. The sedative and hypnotic drugs such as trichloroethanol, ethanol and opioids also cause hypothermia. Next is the hyperthermia. Hyperthermia may be caused by heat stroke and meningitis and poisoning by anti-chlorogenic agents, by tricyclic antidepressants also, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, carbon monoxide, dhatura, phenols and salicylate. Next is breath odor, that is the odor in your breath. It may be caused due to the alcohol, acetone, that is diabetic, ketoacidosis and starvation also. Solvents such as toluene, trichloroethane, ether, turpentine, petrol, kerosene, cyanide and methyl salicylate that are generally used in cases of glue snuffing. Next is appearance of blood, urine and vomit. If blood is there, means the red venous blood may suggest cyanide or carbon monoxide poisoning. Brown arterial or venous blood may suggest methemoglobinemia. In case of vomitus, vomit or gastric lavage containing blood may suggest repeated vomiting. Corrosives, paraquat, coumarine, anticoagulant, irritants, iron and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and many drugs turn urine black also, example in case of metronidazole. In case of urine, urine may be cloudy or red or brown due to hematuria, hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria. Next is blood pressure. In case of hypotension, almost all sedatives, hypnotics, dehydration, lengthy coma, vomiting and sweating may cause hypotension. 
and in case of hypertension, it can be amphetamines, cocaine, phencyclidine, symptomatics and anticholinergic agents. Next is cardiac arrhythmias. That is the changes in heart rate or the rhythm and it may be caused by beta blocking drugs, the organophosphates, theophylline, tricyclic antidepressant, symptomatics, barbiturates, etc. In case of pulmonary edema, it may be due to petroleum products, organophosphates, ethylene glycol, the irritant gases or their metal vapors. Then we have salicylates, opioids, etc. Next is rhabdomyolysis. Patient lying in coma for a long time on hard surface may develop it due to pressure necrosis of the muscles which may lead to renal failure subsequently. The agents mostly responsible for the same are barbiturates, opioids, ethanol and carbon monoxide. Rhabdomyosis can also occur after prolonged and severe muscle spasm due to poisoning by strychnine, phencyclidine and monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Next, we will study about the pattern diagnosis of poisoning. How will you diagnose the poisoning case and what are the symptoms shown? In case of coma, hypotension and flaccidity, it is the barbiturates, benzodiazepines, glutathamide, trichloroethanol, ethanol, opioids, etc. In case of coma, hypertension, tachycardia and dilated pupils, the general drugs used are tricyclic antidepressants, antichlorogenic agents and phenothiazines. Next is malaise, restlessness, nausea, weakness and it is caused by the carbon monoxide, the various solvents, insecticides, lead, mercury, arsenic. For restlessness, hypertonia, hyperreflexia and pyrexia, it is monoamine oxidase inhibitors, anti-chlorogenic agents, strychnine, phencyclidine and amphetamines. For behavioral disturbances, it is the psychotropic drugs, anti-chlorogenic drugs, corticosteroids, solvent abuse, psilocybin mushrooms. In case of burns in mouth, dysphagia, abdominal pain and distension, it is the corrosives, caustics and paraquid. For renal failure, it is because of paracetamol, mercurial compound, acids such as phosphoric, oxalic, formic and phenols, arsine, stibine and lead also. In case of jaundice, hepatic failure, it is because of paracetamol, carbon tetrachloride, phosphorus and organic lead. Now students, let us study about the post-mortem findings in case of poisoning. Poisoning cases being invariably medical legal in nature, if the patient dies, an inquest will have to be done, followed by the post-mortem examination by a forensic pathologist. This is for the purpose of ascertaining the circumstances in which the poisoning may have occurred and to establish the precise cause and manner of death also. The common procedure of examination is the same for all the medical legal autopsy with individual attention being paid to those characteristics which can give a clue to the detection of and also the identification of the poison involved in that particular case. The contents of the stomach should be thoroughly examined for traces of poisons and also for any distinguishable odour. In case of poisoning, a peculiar smell will be observed on opening the body or when the body is being dissected on. The substances detectable by their smell are alcohol, cyanide, carbolic acid, petroleum products, camphor, nicotine, opium, paraldehyde, phosphorus, insecticides and pesticides etc. 
Apart from that, the presence of any foreign material in the form of powder, capsules, tablets, leaves or seeds in the stomach may also be found. There will be laryngeal edema commonly present in death due to alcohol and barbiturate poisoning also. Acute lung congestion and edema will be detected. Acute swelling of brain with or without a pressure cone may be present on opening of the cranial cavity. The urinary bladder will be generally distended. Intravascular sickling may also be observed in some cases and most frequently no signs of trauma or disease in any organs may be visible. Body may decompose faster as compared to the normal conditions of decomposition. The pupils may be dilated or constricted. Irritation, ulceration and perforation or discoloration and the change in color or softening of the mucous membrane of the stomach. The normal mucous membrane of the stomach is pale and white. Irritant poisons cause patchy redness of the mucous membrane at the cardiac end and greater curvature of the stomach but rarely at the pyloric end. Due to the irritation action of the poison there may be small hemorrhagic areas along with the mucus secretion. Redness of the mucosa of the posterior wall may also be found after death. Corrosive acids, alkalis and irritants cause softening of the greater curvature and the cardiac end of the stomach as they damage the superficial epithelium. In diseased states such as peptic ulcer cases or malignancy, this softening is uniform and limited to stomach only. Whereas in case of putrefaction, the softening starts at the dependent parts and involves all the layers of the stomach wall and the inflammatory signs are also absent. Carbolic acid causes hardening and shrinkage of the mucous membrane. Ulcers due to corrosives or irritant poisons are present on the greater curvature, have thin friable margins and are surrounded by signs of inflammation. The mucosa is soft and hyperemic. The perforation of stomach may be found in strong acid such as sulfuric acid poisoning. The stomach is usually black in color with extensive damage to mucosa. The aperture is large with irregular edges and the coats are lacerated through which acid escapes to the peritoneal cavity causing acute peritonitis. Next is the chemical analysis. In every case of death due to poisoning an attempt must be made to demonstrate the presence of poison by a standardized analytical method. For this purpose the pathologist conducting the autopsy must collect certain part of the viscera and body fluid and dispatch them through the police to the nearest forensic science laboratory or to the nearest FSA. While submitting the samples for analysis it must be ensured that the correct quantity has been preserved in appropriate preservative in suitable sealed containers. Since poisons can cause degenerative changes in target organs Histopathological evidence of such damage can be a valuable corroborative adjunct or the evidence. Microscopic examination of tissues may also sometimes help to substantiate a suspicion of long standing abuse which could have contributed to the cause of death also. Tissues submitted for histopathology must always be preserved in formalin. An important proof of poisoning is the detection of poisons in the excreta, blood and viscera. The finding of the poison in the food medicines act as a corroborative but not a conclusive proof. The medical practitioner must preserve all the viscera and get it sealed in his presence for onward transmission to the police officer who will forward it to the 
forensic science lab for chemical analysis. The viscera along with certain body fluids should be collected, preserved and sent to the FSL or the forensic science laboratory for chemical analysis by a forensic pathologist. The presence of poisons should be demonstrated by standardized analytical methods. The preservative for the viscera is rectified spirit or saturated solution of saline. The blood can be preserved in potassium oxalate or sodium fluoride and urine should also be preserved with sodium fluoride as well. Next we will study about the analytical techniques of diagnosis. The analytical technique for the detection of poison, drugs and various chemicals are more dependable and satisfactory than the usual chemical and biochemical method. The common analytical technique employed in toxicological analysis are the spectrophotometric method of analysis is based on the absorbance or transmission of light from a color reaction at a specific wavelength. It includes the various techniques such as calorimetry, fluorimetry and automation. Next is the chromatographic techniques of analysis. The chromatographic techniques are based on the migration of compound on the adsorbent that is the solid phase by a mobile phase. It includes thin layer chromatography, gas liquid chromatography or GLC, high pressure liquid chromatography or HPLC and the gas liquid mass spectrometry or GLMS. Third here is the competitive binding assay or the immunoreactive assay. It includes radio immunoassay or RIA, enzyme immunoassay or better known as EIA, fluorescent polarization immunoassay or FPIA and lastly the immunoturbidic metric assay. Now students let us summarize this module. There are several symptom patterns which are typical for different types of poisoning and can be a useful guide to the nature of poison, the laboratory test needed and the treatment required. Since poison can cause degenerative changes in the target organs, histopathological evidence of such damage can be a valuable corroborative adjunct. Poisoning cases being invariably medical legal in nature, if the patient dies an inquest will have to be done followed by the proper post-mortem examination by a forensic pathologist. This is for the purpose of ascertaining the circumstances in which the poisoning occurred and to establish the exact cause and manner of death. The contents of the stomach should be thoroughly examined for traces of poison and also for the distinguishable odour. In case of poisoning a peculiar smell will be observed on opening of the body or when the body is being dissected. The analytical technique for the detection of poison, drugs and various chemicals are more dependable and satisfactory than the usual chemical and biochemical methods. Post-mortem toxicology is used to determine whether alcohol, drug or other poison may have caused or contributed to the death of an individual. The unequal distribution of drugs in tissues leads to changes in the blood concentration of drugs after death. This is called as the post-mortem redistribution and occurs primarily by diffusion of drug from neighboring tissue sites and from organs such as from the stomach contents. If there is a strong evidence that the substance detected may have been responsible for the cause of death of that individual, quantitative examination of the post-mortem tissues may provide conclusive proof of poisoning. 